an 18-year Major League Baseball veteran, Dan Plesak, back here on the show. How are you, Dan? Rich, I'm doing good. Hey, as soon as this brawl happened the other day, I thought of you. Because I thought, you know what? Okay. I think Rich is going to be a calling. Okay, good. Well, uh, I'm, I'm glad. You, what, why'd you think of me? Because you knew I'd have a problem with it? or No, nah, because you know what? The last time we had the discussion with the Red Sox and yes. the Orioles thing with the Manny Machado and should they have hit him, should they have not have hit him. So that's the first thing that came to my mind. Well, I mean, you are, in, in a way, um, let's just put it this way, even though I think this is your second or third appearance on this show, you are now our de facto go to unwritten rule guy gotcha. when it comes to this sort of thing. Um, let's start with this thing. Is is Did that break a written rule or an unwritten rule that uh, Strickland went ahead and hit Harper for what appears to be two playoff home runs from years past? You, you know what? I, I have never been – I'm as old school as it gets, but I have never been one that, that, that at all thinks that what Strickland did – was good. I, I, I could. I have never understood why a pitcher would throw a ball and deliberately hit a guy because one, he's either he's he's hot against the guy or he can't get the guy out. To me, that's a lame excuse. If there was ever rich an occasion that it was, it couldn't have looked more deliberate than that pitch was. Okay, and this wasn't about the Giants. This wasn't about the Nationals. This was about one guy. This was about Hunter Strickland getting back for 2014, two home runs that Bryce Harper hit when he was a 21-year-old. The second one was he animated when he went in the dugout. Of course he was. But, Rich, this wasn't a game in May. This wasn't a game, a second game of a doubleheader in August. This was playoff baseball in 2014. Tensions are at high. Testosterone is raging. You're playing to get to the World Series. And, and – I have put this, I, and I, I don't know if you, this, I'm just going to tell you the way I saw it. Sure. I applauded what Bryce Harper did for this reason. I played for 18 seasons, and I sat in many a dugouts on six different teams, from Milwaukee to Chicago, Toronto, the Diamondbacks, the Pirates, where a guy felt like on the team I was playing with that he, got, he was thrown at intentionally. Would come in and say, somebody's got to go down, this has got to stop, or if a guy thought he got hit on purpose, my feeling was always this, Rich. If I was standing there in a batter's box and I felt like Rich Eisen deliberately threw a pitch to hit me and did, I could do one of two things. I could either go to first base or I could say the guy's out there 60 feet, six inches away and go get him. And I applaud what Bryce Harper did because a lot of guys will talk like, oh, man, hey, we got to do something. They'll come in the dugout. They'll scream up the runway. And for three or four days, they're all complaining to the pitchers. Somebody's got to go down. Somebody's got to get hit. You know, and, and as a pitcher, sometimes you sit there and go, wait, if you really think he hit you, then go, the guy's right out there. He's 60 feet away. Go out there and get him. And I, applaud, I applauded what he did because if there was ever – this was so blatantly obvious, Rich, that I think when you look at the way the league came down, that find Hunters that suspended him for six games and only four games for Bryce Harper. This was as blatant. This had nothing to do with a hard slide like Manny Machado going into Pedroia. This had nothing to do with, you know, uh, a guy. This, this was strictly a personal thing between Strickland and to Bryce Harper. So That's all it was. What happens tonight, Dan? I mean, we got we're, we're back. You don't think anything happens tonight? Buster Nothing. Posey doesn't get one in the year or something stupid no. thrown behind I, him? No, no, not at all. I, I this this to me, Rich. When these things escalate and they keep going, mm -hmm. is when it's be, it. You have a problem with a certain team, like you feel like there's a dirty slide or they're stealing what whatever crazy. Listen, baseball players aren't the smartest guys in the world, Rich. Let's just face it. <laughs> okay. You know what I mean? Sure. And for whatever reason, teams hold grudges, players hold grudges. I didn't like what happened between the Red Sox and the Orioles because they had a, they had a chance to hit Manny Machado, and they missed him. They kept throwing at him till eventually they were going to hit him, right? Mm -hmm. This, to me, this has nothing to do with, with either of these two teams. This was Hunter Strickland, and I don't even think this was Bryce Harper, but Bryce Harper realized, wait a minute, he just threw one at me and hit me on purpose. With that said, I can guarantee you this, Rich, and I've watched this over and over and over for 48 hours. If Buster Posey had to do it all over again, he wouldn't have stood there like he did. I, Rich, and I don't know what's right and I don't know what's wrong, but I can tell you this. After playing for 18 years, and I got a text message from – 
a guy that caught me and was a member of the Braves when they won the World Series, Charlie O'Brien. He's another guy as old school as old school gets. Sent me a text message yesterday saying, I can't believe Buster stood there. One of the unwritten, I guess you're going to call it an unwritten rule for a catcher is, you don't let a guy get out there to the mound. You do, whether you have to get in front of the guy, whether you have to tackle him, whether you, I, this thing all could have been, I'm not saying it should have been stopped, but if Buster Posey would have immediately jumped out there and grabbed Bryce Harper, stood between him, I don't think this would have escalated to the way it did. Dan That's Plass, just my personal opinion. Dan Plesak of MLB Networks. Then what do you think was going through Posey's mind? Just like he couldn't believe Strickland did it or he thought it was a dumbass Probably, move and yeah. I'm not going to support it by yeah, yeah, let him get his ass I, beat? I, part of it is that and part of it is a guy that's already had some, you know, some injuries. Yeah, right. He's had some concussion issues himself. He's had a, a knee with the Posey, you know, all the collisions at home plate. That was another reason. And I think he just – he vapor locked for a few seconds and was like, what the hell is going on here? And before – I can guarantee you this, Rich. I, I – I would almost guarantee you that if Buster Posey had to do it all over again, he would have attacked that thing differently than he did. Now, I know you, you, were, you were on hold, I guess, towards the end of the last segment, so you heard what I said, that baseball could stop this by right. telling everybody, don't leave the dugout. You do, you're subject to suspension, and if you leave your position, you're subject to suspension. You've been a reliever. What, what does a reliever think as he's running 300 yeah. feet into this fray? I mean, you think, I'm, I can't wait to beat somebody up, or, or no, like, what am I doing here? I'll tell you what's crazy. Now, going back to when I came, when I first broke in, yeah. with the Brewers were playing at County Stadium, right? That bullpen was out in right center field. And you don't have time to run down those steps. And guys would, you jumped over the wall, right? Mm -hmm. And there were guys who would fall down, who would twist and roll an ankle. <laughs> this is the protocol, Rich. Yes. When something like that happens, you got to go. You've got to beat those other guys from the bullpen onto the field. Nine out of ten times. It's nothing but a lot of screaming and yelling and pushing and shoving. But you'll have a few ugly incidents where it gets really ugly. And that could have got really, really ugly the other day in San Fran. It didn't. And I think, fortunately, you know the crazy part about this whole thing, Rich, is thank goodness that Samarja and Mike Morris ran into each other because Samarja was going out there. He was going out there to get Bryce Harper. And I think that would have turned into – a real melee because Samarja was going to go after Bryce Harper, and I'm telling you, that thing could have gotten real ugly. So, fortunately, these two guys ran into each other, and unfortunately for Mike Morris, he's on the seven-day DL because of a concussion out of it. Which is crazy. So, yeah. what, would, what, would players, what would players say, Dan, if baseball did step in and suddenly say, you are not allowed to join a fight? Let the pitcher – and the, if the pitcher and the, and the, uh, and the base and the uh, – and the batter want to go at it, just like hockey. Let them go like at it, and then the umpires come in and break it up, just like, just like hockey. And I know baseball doesn't want to be equated to hockey, but if you're going to allow fighting and kids can see this sort of thing, what would players say if there was a rule instituted like that, Dan? I, you, you know what? I, I really think that most players would probably be in support of that thing, right? Because I think as a pitcher, if I'm going to deliberately go out there and hit somebody, and if I know that they're going to let Daryl Strawberry, they're going to let Mike Trout, they're going to let Albert Pujols, they're going to let them come out and get him, maybe you would think twice about intentionally hitting a guy or not, right? Mm -hmm. And the same thing on the flip side as a hitter. If you think that Randy Johnson or Roger Clemens or Pedro Martinez is hitting you on purpose, boom, you go out there and go ahead and get him. Hmm. You might you might be onto something. You really might be onto something. Well, run that up the MLB Network flag. I'm going to do that. Go for it, Dan. Before I let you go, uh, tomorrow my first scheduled guest is Bob Euchre. I couldn't be more excited. Do you got a good story? What's your best Bob Euchre story from your Milwaukee oh, man, days? There, 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 there's so many. I know there you are. Know, he was, you know, Rich, this was at the time, like my rookie year in 86, that was at the height of the light beer commercials. You know, the front row. Yeah. And, I mean, this was the Mr. Belvedere days. Yes. There were so many. But I, I can't tell you any on the air because some of them were vulgar. Is that right? But, oh, Rich, he's one of the funniest guys you'll ever meet. And I'm telling you, he's got a million stories. And the one thing that I think surprised me the most, because coming up my rookie year, like, you know, Bob Euchre was, he was like what Harry Carey was to the, to the Cubs, sure. right? I mean, mm -hmm. larger, bigger than the team. Euchre was a, we would get off the team bus in Yankee Stadium, and we had some really good players, Molitor, Yount, Cecil Cooper, Ben Ogilvy, right? And there's all those people waiting by the press box where the bus would enter for the game. And we'd walk off that bus, and you'd hear a few guys, hey, Robin, you know, hey, Cecil. When Euchre walked off that bus, everybody was screaming, Euchre, you know, front row. 
He was bigger than the Brewers, if you can believe that. He was that big. Yeah, and he's one of the few people you know you could you could talk to about movies. And Johnny Carson, uh, he he appeared on the Tonight Show forever because Carson loved having conversations with with Bob. And and I'm looking forward to tomorrow. So and, uh, and, on, and on top of it, you'll be surprised how much of a really true baseball fan this guy loves broadcasting Brewer baseball games. It's amazing. Yeah, and he's broadcasting a first place team. You right got now, Dan. I don't know for how much longer. But he's their first place right now. Everybody's <laughs> waiting for that other shoe to drop on exactly. the on on Milwaukee with the Cubs to start, you know, putting the pedal to the metal. But uh, thanks for joining, Dan. Appreciate you got it, Rich. Anytime, we'll do it again. You got it. The Rich Eisen Show, weekdays at noon Eastern on radio stations across the country and audience. If you like that, please download our app. There's lots of fun things there other than just more of the videos you just saw. You can call us from the app. You can email us from the app. Just download it. Trust me, you'll enjoy it.